What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. If you don't know, my name is Dr. Chad Connor. I'm a board certified internist and current chief medical resident. And today I'm bringing to you a very special guest and dear friend of mine, Dr. Vinay Thomas. He is a co-chief medical resident with me and a future hematology oncology fellow at the University of Utah. Uh, so welcome, Dr. Thomas. Hi, everyone. It's, um, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much, for Chad, for inviting me onto your channel and giving me the opportunity to talk. Uh, it's a real pleasure, and I look forward to talking with you today. Awesome, Vinay. Thanks for joining me, man. I think this is going to be really useful. Uh, you know, just a brief overview today, we want to talk about what exactly is HEMOC, the road to getting into hematology and oncology, what people who are currently interested in hematology and oncology can expect in their path to becoming a hematologist or oncologist, and what you're most excited about in the field. So again, thanks for joining me today. Sounds good, Dad. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. So uh, I want to start today, Vinay, by asking you, and, and maybe you can explain to the people that are watching, what exactly is hematology and oncology? Okay. So to put it in very simple terms, hematology, so it's two different branches which are combined into a fellowship. Uh, so it's a three-year fellowship. Hematology, oncology are two different fields. So hematology is the study of blood. So it can be any condition of the blood which is related which is cancerous, for example, leukemias, lymphomas, which are cancer of the blood cells, or it could be related to non-cancerous conditions of the blood, like anemia, where there's decreased hemoglobin, which affects a lot of the population. It could be decreased platelet counts, bleeding disorders like hemophilia and things like that. So that's the hematology part of it. Oncology, we talk about particularly in cancers of organ systems, for example, cancers of the head, neck, and throat, cancers of the lung, cancers of the stomach, and other parts of the GI tract. We talk about the biology of cancer, what the symptoms and presentations of different cancers are, and most importantly, how to treat those cancers and how to treat patients who are affected with this unfortunate condition. Thanks, Vinay. That's a great explanation. Why, why are you choosing Hemonc? What interests you in the field? So that's, a, I think, Chad, if you ask this like to different people, you'll have, you'll get different answers. But for personally, for me, it's always been the patients. So uh, it's actually a, it's actually a little, uh, uh, it's a little bit of a long answer, but uh, let me tell you why I chose it specifically. So when I first came to the US, I was doing a few clinical rotations and I always had this misconception that hemonc is a very sad field. So when I did that, before I did that rotation, I remember talking to my attending. My attending actually asked me, hey, Vinay, what do you want to do after internal medicine? I actually said, no way am I do doing hemoc. I'm definitely either going to be doing cardiology or nephrology. So I said, he laughed, actually. But then when I did my rotation with him, I was so pleasantly surprised with the job that he did. So patients who were very sick, who had like maybe like a few weeks to live or months to live would come in and leave with a smile on their face. And I was like so very impressed and surprised by that amazing job that he did. I really could connect with the patients and I feel like these patients are some like are people who you can do a lot for. In their time of need, you are the one who you are the one who serves as a beacon of hope for these patients. And that I feel like it really resonated with me and who I am as a person. So you we get to be um, long term partners or physicians for these patients can really provide for them and take care of them in their time of need. Um, so the patient and patients and the connections you get with the patients is definitely the number one reason. Second, for, like it's a very, very interesting field, Chad. Like the more you get into it, like the the minute biological details, the mechanisms of all of cancer, the new treatments that are coming out are fantastic. With, uh, the changes, the rapid advances in the field have been great as well. Actually, the new cancer survey came out, and like they're saying that the age, uh, the life expectancy has um, in cancer has actually increased, and the death rates have actually decreased a lot as well due to the recent advances which have been made. So the research is, is very, very exciting. Um, the subject itself is fantastic, and the, I, I personally believe that the patients in Monk are the best. So 
why not he won't? That's a very biased opinion at the end there. But I have to say, from my experience during residency and my Hemonk rotation, I kind of had the same perception as you that it was a sad field. But in reality, it could be a very exciting and actually rewarding field because there's been so many advancements in the cancer treatment these days that actually the outcomes are improving drastically. So I, I agree with you. I think that it's a very exciting field and I'm glad that you mentioned that. Totally, Chad. Totally, Chad. So like uh, one of my attending actually told me when they, the patients come to you without any hope and you are the ones who give them hope for hope. For, for me, that's a very, very special feeling. So I know it can be challenging sometimes, but definitely not a sad feeling. That's awesome, Vinay. Uh, I, I want to mention too that you mentioned in that um, explanation when you came to the United States. So we probably should have introed with this, but tell us a little bit about your back background, where you came from, what made you come to the United States and become a physician? Okay, so uh, I'm from the south of India. I came to the U.S. because honestly, uh, the training, the medical training in the U.S. I feel is unparalleled. Uh, I, so I, I wanted to know what the training system is like and see what it is like, whether it's a good fit for me. So when I came here, I did a few rotations here. And one of the rotations which I did was one at a university hospital in hematology oncology. So that's when I really decided that I wanted. So I finished my medical school in India. I did a few rotations to see if the, uh, the U.S. system is a good fit for me. And I love the U.S. system. So I decided to pursue residency in internal medicine because that's what something that I've always been passionate about. So in it, it's in Indian medical, the medical school system is a bit different. We don't do undergrad. Uh, we don't do undergrad like we like we do here in the U.S. So after high school, I applied for medical school. Medical school there is like five and a half to six years sometimes. So you do medical school and then you can apply for residency. So uh, I guess the path to becoming a hematologist, oncologist would be in, if, I, if you're a graduate from India, you would be doing your medical school, then your internal medicine residency, maybe a year of chief residency like you're doing, Chad, and then applying for a, um, a hematology oncology fellowship. So, but again, if you're doing it in the US, you do your undergrad, then your med school, then a residency in internal medicine, and then you apply for hematology oncology. Yeah, so it's a long road, right? So, I mean, in the US, it's four years for undergrad, four years for medical school, three years for internal medicine residency, you and I have tacked on an extra year of chief medical residency, and then you're looking at an additional three years of hematology oncology fellowship. So you're looking at a total right. of 15 years of postgraduate training after high school. So you must really love the field. Yes. Oh yeah, for sure. Honestly, Chad, by this point, like training has kind of become part and parcel of our life. Uh, it's like we're used to being in training all the time. And honestly, I feel like people who go into this field in, in medicine in particular are people who are really passionate about it. So we don't feel like it's long. I think it's a, the more, I feel like the more I train, the better equipped I am because it's such a different feel and it's, you have to have your own niche. So I think I'm very excited about it. And like talking about it, even after three years of fellowship in hematology, oncology, some people pursue a sub fellowship. For example, there are sometimes one or two year fellowships that are offered like in particular fields like plasma cell disorders like called myeloma or lymphoma, things like that, maybe like an addition or bone marrow transplant, which everyone need not do. Most of them end up doing the three years of fellowship and then ending up in practice or in academic centers, but you can do the additional one or two years if needed. Gotcha. So you could even it could be longer than that. Wow. Well yes. so Vinay, yes. so yes. So people who are thinking about becoming a hematologist oncologist, what advice would you give them, whether they're current residents, medical school students, or even just in undergraduate, what would you give them uh, advice wise in order to become a hematologist oncologist? Okay, so it's, it's, that's a great question, Chad. So, and like, um, so I would say the first thing you really need to do is uh, whether you actually love the field. Uh, because it, if you do like the field, this is definitely, it's either a, a definite yes or a no. It's a very polarizing field, I would say, when people choose this. So either you love it or you hate it. So you definitely need to have a few rotations under your belt in hematology oncology to confirm that you actually love this field. The second thing I would say is, especially when you're in undergrad or you're doing your residency, building connections early and having good mentors is very, very important. Uh, as I navigated the match process, Chad, the people who have who I've seen have done really well are people who have very good research portfolios. So if you have a good mentor early on who you can work on research with uh, early on and establish a good research background, that 
definitely, definitely helps. Also, it's very important to remember in research, it's never a one man show. It's always a team sport, like everything in medicine. So have, collaborate with each other. A lot of people, I would say. You might be the first author on one. You might be the 10th author on an, another paper. Doesn't matter. Build those connections. Don't be afraid to collaborate. That's the way to move ahead. And by the time you're ready to apply, you'll have built a pretty good CV for yourself. And the most important thing, Chad, I think you have to be an empathetic person. This is not something you can like, you just have to be a person who understands the pain of others and can step into their shoes. I think that's something you need to have an innate characteristic. That's not something you can build on, I guess. But I think that's something that's very, very important for people to understand. I think that's an important quality for physicians, you know, no matter what subspecialty you are, but I couldn't agree with you more. In the field of hematology oncology where you're likely delivering bad news on a regular basis. I think you're absolutely right. Some compassion innately is incredibly important. Yes, Vinay, I, this has been great, man. And you're giving such great information to people who might be interested in the field. For yourself, what are you interested in in terms of, are you trying to subspecialize in hematology, oncology, further training after fellowship? What are you thinking? Chad, like, first of all, thank you again for having me here. So people, I actually actually talk. Um, it's a great platform and I think it's going to be really useful. But getting to the second half of your question, Chad. So I think at this point, like when everyone starts an EMOM fellowship, there are a few people who know exactly what they want. They say, okay, I'm going to do multiple myeloma or like I'm going to do like lymphomas and they set out knowing exactly what they want. I for myself, I haven't like narrowed down into one particular field. I have in the, at this moment, I know that I, I am interested in non-malignant hematology or it's called benign hematology, which includes the anemias, the clotting disorders, the bleeding disorders, which I just mentioned. I'm also going to do some research in genitourinary oncology, which is like uh, oncology, which is cancer involving the kidneys, uh, the urinary bladder, uh, the prostate, things like that, which is again a very interesting field and very like field where you have a lot of advancements. Uh, I haven't really thought of the extra year, Chad. I think uh, when I go through my fellowship, I'll kind of discover what I really want to do. I think it'll open up for me. That's incredibly interesting, Vinay. Is there anything that you're really excited about for starting fellowship? I know we're definitely going to have to catch up again after fellowship has started. You're a couple months in with, you know, a little bit of experience. But what are you most excited about in starting? Oh, my God, Chad. I'm so, honestly, I'm so very really excited. I think I, I, like, I just can't wait to see patients in this in this particular field for example when you get a consult when you place a hematology oncology consult you are that person who has that final say so like studying more about these topics in detail be that person who they turn to like for your answers and you are that final say feels very exhilarating to me and i just can't wait to like dive deep into my books and keep like and study and be that expert on the in that field um, and again, I'm very excited about the patients, as I said. I just can't wait to be that person who can, who, who is that, who is the biggest patients, like I would say the same, the beacon of hope or their rock, you know, their rock of support. So I think I'm very excited about that. Also, I think I'm very excited to like delve into research. Um, luckily, I was able to match at university, which has um, really good uh, research and like a lot of like good funding as well. So I'm excited about like uh, going more into research and taking up more research projects. So overall, it's very, very exciting, Chad. And like I again, if I had to do it all over again, I would do it with in a jiffy without a, without any second thought. That's awesome, Vinay. Again, man, I, I really want to thank you for joining me today. Your energy and your compassion is contagious, and I think you're going to make an outstanding hematologist, oncologist. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Obviously, we get to talk to each other on a regular basis, but being able to put this out there for people to see, I think, is going to be really beneficial for a lot of people. Um, so, so thank you so much for joining me. No, Chad, thank you so much for having me. And actually, awesome, awesome job putting up this YouTube channel. I think it's going to be very, very useful for people who are looking to get more questions answered. And again, uh, people who are, like, who are interested in Hemong, it's an awesome field. And I'm not saying this lightly. It's becoming very popular. Uh, if you're not, if you're thinking about it, great job. If you're not thinking about it, then you should definitely be at least thinking about it or doing a rotation in hematology oncology. So, Chad, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure talking to you and good, good luck on your channel.
Thanks, Panay. This has been great. Um, for everybody who's watching, if you've enjoyed this video or found it at all useful, please click the subscribe button in the bottom right hand of your screen. You can also click that little bell to get notifications and be the first to know when new videos drop. Until next time, everyone, have a great day.